Joining us is Craig Aaron, new president and CEO of Free Press. Uh, great to see you, Craig, and thanks for doing this on short notice. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. So I'm reading over the weekend, just getting ready for the show, and I see that Meredith Atwell Baker, a uh, Republican FCC commissioner who approved the NBC merger, now is going to become a Comcast lobbyist. And my initial thought is yet another case of big media corruption. Am I wrong on that? No, I think this might be the most blatant example yet. You know, here you have an FCC commissioner, one of five people tasked with protecting the public interest when it comes to media policy. One day she's voting to approve a, you know, close to $40 billion merger of Comcast. And then just four months later, she announces, OK, well, I'm done with this whole public service job. And guess what? I'm going to be the new DC lobbyist for the newly combined Comcast NBC. So if you want to know why we have such a hard time passing public interest media policy, it's because so many people like Commissioner Baker, uh, you know, have one eye out the door preparing for their next job. And those are exactly the kind of policies they pursue, ones that are going to help them get those future jobs. Well, when it's just a matter of a few months, the obvious thing that I thought of was, well, did she was she being pursued already? Was her vote influenced by a, a, a possible possible job that was being hung over her head already? Comcast has denied that. But we, we don't know, right? I mean, that could have been the case. Right. We don't know if there was any actual quid pro quo. I mean, there's certainly the appearance of one. And, and I think the larger issue, though, is, you know, whether or not there was some kind of tacit agreement in place, and I have no reason to think that there was, the fact that an FCC commissioner can just this easily bounce to the company she was supposed to be regulating, I think is exactly the reason people have so much uh, disillusionment and distrust and disgust with what's happening here in Washington, D.C. Because instead of looking out for you and me, instead of pursuing policies that are going to give us uh, lower prices and faster speeds and more choices in the media, we see the FCC commissioners uh, simply doing the bidding of these big co these big companies. So whether or not there was any agreement in place, there's no question that during her time at the commission, uh, Commissioner Baker did the bidding of these companies. And uh, now she's being rewarded by it with what I anticipate to be a you know multi-million dollar salary. So whether or not it was some kind of secret backroom and agreement, I think people have reason to be uh, disturbed and, and find a big problem with this kind of thing that now passes for business as usual in Washington. Yeah, well, this is very similar to what we see on the financial within the financial industry Absolutely. all the time. I mean, it's it's literally it's almost common that they will go back and forth from regulating these large financial corporations and then lobbying for them. Um, with regard to the the actual discussion that took place with Meredith Baker during the merger discussions, what my reading of it suggests that she was actually against a lot of the restrictions, stipulations um, that that were proposed as part of the merger. She seemed to want to clear the way for a more, I don't know, I guess she would call it a more free merger. Well, right. As recently as March, she was giving speeches as an FCC commissioner complaining that the process for Comcast was too onerous. You know, even though the restrictions on this deal were, were minor and minuscule, she thought it was too much and it took too long. And, no, no, you know, and she was a great advocate for Comcast. It's no wonder they were interested in her. But that's not really what the job of the Federal Communications Commission or any of these other agencies is supposed to be. It's not about expediting mergers of these big country of big companies it's about uh, asking whether or not they're in the public interest i don't think the fcc uh really did its due diligence in measuring whether this one was in the public in interest and i'm very worried because they're about to face another mega merger here at at t t-mobile and you have to wonder which fcc commissioners are thinking about uh that sweet corner office at at t if they vote the way that at t wants i mean it just seems the system lends itself it, it's just so easy for a contact to be made by at t or t-mobile to any of the people that are voting and to just kind of imply that there may be a job waiting for them if they can get this through. I just uh, is it the cynic and am I wrong in being so cynical? It just seems why wouldn't they do it? Well, no, I mean, unfortunately, you're not wrong to be so cynical. And at least you still see the shame in it. And I think that's the problem that I see here in Washington is that so many people have stopped seeing this as a problem. And it's not just 
uh, a Meredith Atwell Baker or an FCC commissioner, Michael Powell, who, you know, a couple years out of office is now the, the top cable lobbyist for the Cable Trade Association. Uh, but it's their advisors uh, and the advisors of the current FCC commissioners, Democrat and Republican alike. It's people in the bureaus who, you know, go into this job, uh, these public service jobs with an idea to uh, look, uh, excuse me, an eye out for when they can cash in. And that's the whole problem has become so pervasive and people have stopped being surprised. And then, but the problem with that is that gives these big companies exactly what they want. Uh, the general public, they get disgusted, they get disturbed, they say, oh, I can never make a difference. And that's exactly what an AT&T or a Comcast hopes happens is that all of us out here uh, give up and say, well, the game is rigged and stop getting involved and stop putting that pressure on. And you know, on top of it, of course, they have people inside doing their bidding. Uh, that just shows you how broken and how captured the system is uh, and why I think we need to redouble our efforts to change it and try to put things in place that would make it harder for these guys to just uh, to, to just jump or at the very least demonstrate, as I think we have with Commissioner Baker, that you can't just do this and hope nobody will pay attention, that uh, the, 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 the public scrutiny and the public shame uh, might discourage others from taking the same path in the future. Yeah, I mean, my producer's so discouraged by this stuff, the guy doesn't even vote anymore. But that's you know, that's a story for a different day. And I'm sure our, sure our audience... We'll, we'll, we'll get to him. Hey, real quick before we go, uh, a la carte cable TV pricing. I've been thinking for a while that if you could pick which channels you want and pay individually, tons of these garbage channels would go completely away, which is probably the reason why we don't have a la carte pricing. Is That's that, right. Is that on the horizon at all? Is that a possibility? Well, I, you know, I, I don't think it's on the horizon immediately, but I think the common sense nature of it, especially in this, you know, uh, modern Internet era where we're so used to being able to go online, go wherever you want, do whatever you want, download whatever you want. If, if I was in the cable business, I would think that that would be a very attractive model. Uh, certainly, if you put in the, the right amount of production so that new channels could actually get, you know, a sort of a testing tier where you'd have a chance to put your stuff in front of the audience, there's no question. I'd love to replace a few hundred of the channels that I'm paying for every month with content I actually want to see. Unfortunately, the biggest cable companies, the biggest content companies, what they want to do is try to package all these things together, tie them together. And if you want to get an ESPN or an MSNBC, well, they want to force you to take a bunch of their garbage channels along with it. And that's been the broken system we've been dealing with. Uh, I, I certainly think it's something we need to look more at because people want more choice and they frankly, they want to pay, they're willing to pay a fair price for things they actually want to watch. And I think the other thing, unfortunately, that the dominant providers are scared of is that we would actually learn who's watching what. You know, yeah. right now, a cable channel can say, oh, we've got millions and millions of viewers. But if we actually had all of our cable pricing, you know, people would be able to, uh, you know, vote with their dollars and get the channels they want. Those might not be the channels that Comcast or Time Warner think you should be seeing. All right, Craig Aaron, president and CEO of Free Press. Maybe next time you'll help me decipher why it is that when the cable box I rent from, from Comcast breaks and I have to replace it, I pay a change fee, even though it's not even my box. But we'll, but we'll leave that for next time. Thanks for All joining right, us, Craig. All right, look forward to that one. All right, take care.